Today I have a special guest, Karen Bussolini, who's a garden writer and photographer. She's going to talk to us about one of her favorite subjects, silver plants. Thanks for joining me today, Good Karen. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here in Oklahoma on a bright blue sky day. It's a wonderful day. Now, silver plants are well adapted for growing here in Oklahoma. Do you want to tell me a little bit about the different kinds of silver plants oh, that sure. we can grow? Oh, sure. Sure. Silver is an adaptation to harsh conditions like drought, sun, wind, and you have a lot of them. I love these great big open skies. Mm -hmm. In Connecticut, uh, where I garden, I have uh, a lot fewer silvers that I can grow. But one of the most common, uh, familiar kind of silvers are the ones that have a hairy coating and that protects them from loss of moisture, like this um, silver pony foot here. Uh, very, very fine, satiny hairs make them appear silver. Or we have over here mm -hmm. Artemisia powis castle, which is a, a hardy perennial and very graceful and pretty. Mm -hmm. um, the, the silver pony foot is, is tender. And uh, we have another, one of my favorite, one of my favorite silver, very, very tender plants is Plectranthus. And you can see that there are silver hairs on it. If you change its direction toward the sun, it looks variously green or silver. Uh, but when you have these big wide open skies and lots of sun, they get really, really silvery. Mm -hmm. This is really tender, but what I do is I just pick some and plunk it in water at the end of the season, and if you look at it with a moist eye, it'll send out roots in about two days Excellent. and grow it in my greenhouse window. Now, lamb's ear is so. another one of these that we commonly grow yeah. uh, with uh, the hairs on them. Right, well, lamb's ears are really pretty much the first thing people think of when I was looking for gardens to photograph. I said, I'm doing a book on silver plants. I'm looking for silver plants to photograph. And people would say, oh, silver plants. Um, oh, you mean like lamb's ears? Mm -hmm. And they are really adaptable, much more adaptable than some, and very common all over the country. I see them in Minnesota, New England, Texas, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. everywhere, whether it's cold or hot, even in the mid-Atlantic states where it can be really humid. And they're covered with really dense hair, so they appear really silvery. But it's a little hard to believe they're really green plants underneath it all. If you take water, uh, you just pour a watering can on a bunch of lamb's ears, you'll see that uh, they're really green leaves. And what the hairs do is they're like a cocoon. They're silvery, silky hairs. They reflect the sun, mm -hmm. so that protects the, um, the leaf from losing water. And they trap a layer of moisture against the leaf. And when you think of all those hairs, each one makes a little shadow, so it's shading the leaf. Mm -hmm. So that allows it to live in really harsh conditions, like, say, next to a stone terrace or a driveway in really full sun. Yes. And most of these sun-loving silvers really like lousy soil, too. So they don't want a lot of irrigation. They don't want a lot of uh, fertilizer. Okay. Now, another adaptation is a, having a waxy coating. Okay. So say with this agave, if you just kind of wet the leaf, oh see yeah. how green that is underneath? It can rub the wax right yeah, off. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it rubs right off. I know probably people who have shade will grow hostas. Hostas are a waxy silver that grows in the shade. And mm -hmm. in the spring, they're really, really silvery. But later in the season, when the trees above leaf out, they don't need to keep making that silvery. Um, coating anymore. Okay. What are some other uh, waxy silvers that we can well, grow? Well, here is a, a blue fescue being scampered over by <laughs> the, the silver falls. Any of the really blue grasses or say a juniper or blue spruce, they have mm -hmm. a waxy coating. And this makes them especially nice companions for the downy silver plants because they have that common underlying silver color. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of them, uh, sedums are succulent, agaves are succulent, they're holding water in their leaf as well as having this waxy coating. These are all going to grow really well in dry places. Okay. But look at what great contrast they make with each other. Mm -hmm. You have the nice broad leaves of the agave. Exactly. And the texture. I really love combining waxy silvers and the downy silvers, mm -hmm. partly because Plants like this agave have this great bold form, and mm -hmm. a lot of the downy silvers are, you know, kind of small leaves, and they make soft mounds. So this makes a really great contrast. 
Another great contrast is, since the silver is so reflective and so light, it's so effective to contrast something very dark with it. Yeah. Or something bright and vibrant, a magenta flower or this terrifically um, vibrant blue salvia. So silver makes kind of a mood. You have this very light, cool mood and blues go with it. But then other colors that are really vibrant are punchy contrasts. And then you get these great form contrast too. So uh, I just find the more I do it, the more exciting it is. And I find more plants to fall in love with, uh, especially this silver pony foot, the dichondra, which kind of scampers through things and, and offsets a more sculptural form or a contrasting color. Now there's one more place that we can use silvers, and that's in the shade. Well, yes, these downy and waxy silvers are really a response to sun, mm -hmm. but we have silvers that grow in the shade. So let's see what we have growing in the shade. So tell me a bit about the woodland uh, silvers. Well, those downy and waxy coated silvers are for sun and they want really good drainage. But here we have, um, here's a heuchera. This is a native plant. Mm -hmm. And actually the eastern ones can be very silvery. This has variegation. So variegation is the third adaptation. It makes the leaf a little bit reflective. So mm -hmm. um, this can take more sun than a lot of other uh, plants. A silvery woodland plant is going to be able to take a lot more sun than say, you know how yellow hostas mm -hmm. burn in the sun? Yeah. And this not only has that silvery coloring, but it is said that they have like air bubbles, air pockets inside, so they act like air conditioning. Oh, okay. And another, um, other silvers for the shade? Oh, one of the most popular, and I've seen a lot all around Oklahoma. Homa City in Tulsa and different parks and gardens is the Japanese painted fern. Mm -hmm. And there's a version of that that's, that's got a, a patterning that's silver. I grow one called Ghost, mm -hmm. Ethereum Ghost, and it's just pure silver and it's so beautiful. I have a walk in the woods to my campfire and I have it lined with ghost ferns mm -hmm. so that when I come back at night I can find my way out of the woods. They really light up the shade. wet summer we've had. A lot of people have had trouble with lavender. Can you tell oh, me about lavender? Oh, can I lavenders? tell you about trouble with lavender? <laughs> <laughs> the more silvery a plant is, mm -hmm. usually the better drainage it wants. Mm -hmm. So look at how great and full this lavender looks. It's in a raised bed. It's got lots of rocks for the heat to bake and bounce off. And it has this nice light colored mulch. So light's reflecting up to the underside rather than having um, an organic mulch like cocoa bean shells or wood chips uh, where there'd be disease organisms mm -hmm. bouncing up and mud splashing up on this. So good air circulation and um, lots of rock. Well, when you have clay soil, you're pretty limited as to options. Mm -hmm. Maybe a rattlesnake master, Eryngium yuccifolium, which is a native plant, is silvery or you might try some silvery willows. Okay. A lot of artemisias um, are not especially, they're not the first thing you think of when you think of clay soil, but here's one, Artemisia powers castle, which is a beautiful, beautiful perennial, nice lacy texture, mm -hmm. and it is more adaptable to clay than other artemisias, like silver mound, boy, if you get a big rain or if you have clay soil, it's a dead duck. Mm -hmm. It's a fuss pot. And um, this plant right here does what a lot of Artemisias do. They kind of sprawl out and open up in the center. Yeah. What you want to do just before they flower is just cut off like two thirds of the plant and then it forms a nice neat mound. Yeah, uh, can see some, some people the will cut them back a couple times a year. When they start getting leggy, cut them back. You can see they just send out new growth like crazy. Mm -hmm. So they don't mind getting wet back. <laughs> So Karen, how did you get interested in growing silvers? Oh, that's easy. Um, first of all, they're really beautiful. They certainly but are. But being a garden photographer, I travel all the time. And I couldn't help but notice that when I came home from trips, the only thing left in my garden was silver. I have lots <laughs> and lots of deer. And here, brush this and s smell your hands. This oh, yeah. Santalina really is really, really fragrant. Mm -hmm. And a deer doesn't really want to stick its nose in this. Okay. It's got really small leaves, so 
it just, you know, it doesn't taste good. Mm -hmm. uh, another mechanism for holding on to water is to have small leaves. Mm -hmm. So look at this dahlia here. It's kind of small leaves and woody. Mm. It's not all that succulent. It's, uh, I think a deer's probably gonna march by this and go eat your tulips or your hostas instead. Mm -hmm. Or this donkey tail spurge. This has a uh, alkaline sap and it's actually like poison ivy. If you break it and get this milky sap on your hands, you can mm -hmm. get really wicked dermatitis. So why would a deer eat this nasty tasting stuff or get a mouthful of twigs or stick its nose in something that smelled bad. Mm -hmm. So when I caught on to that, I just started planting more and more silvers because, yeah. uh, you know, why buck the bucks? <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate having you. Thanks for having me. I love your silver black and blue garden here. Mm -hmm. So I think you have lots of good silvers for Oklahoma. Thank you.